What's up, guys? Long time no mother and see ya. <sighs> I miss y'all. I hope y'all miss me. I know y'all miss me. Oh, let me see if y'all can hear me. I have my headphones in. Y'all yeah. can definitely hear me. I think doing it with the headphones are better. So, yeah, I'm here with an update for y'all. Uh, I know it's been a minute. It's been a hot second. I think last time I did a video on my weight loss journey, my gastric sleeve journey was at my 10 month mark. And right now we're at a year and six months. So it's been, it's been way too long. Mm, sorry, I've been busy. Currently right now I am in Vegas, not doing Vegas shit because I come here all the time. I am now a flight attendant and I'm trying to determine if I want to do content over being a flight attendant. I kind of don't because I'll be really working y'all. Like I don't be having time to be recording. Um, but um, I do layovers in Vegas all the time. So now I'm just going to start using my time to do my content while I'm in Vegas. My kids are at home in, in Tampa. I'm here. I ain't trying to be outside no more. So I might as well just use this free time to update my my people who love me and the new people who just came to my channel. And by the way, speaking of that, if you are new to my channel, if you're just now seeing this beautiful, this beautiful face for the first time, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Like, what are you waiting for? There's no reason to wait. Like you, you already love me and I already love you. Let's just do this thing. So go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and push that bell so you don't miss any of my other videos. Um, yeah, so we'll be discussing, I got my little notepad. We'll be discussing an update on my gastric sleeve, like, you know, where I am right now, you know, how I'm feeling, blase, blase. Then we'll also be discussing dating after having gastric sleeve. Weird. It's a weird experience. That's all I could say. But um, I'll elaborate more. And then we're going to talk about plastic surgery. D did I get plastic surgery? Did I? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> Roll that intro. Right, all right, all right. You going to learn today. I got my favorite snack right here. One of my favorite snacks, which is frozen watermelon. Well, this is not all the way frozen. It's kind of slushy with uh, tajin. Focus, focus, focus. Well, y'all know what it is. So tajin and frozen watermelon. Mm. Cold, cold to my teeth. But yeah. So let's get right into it. It's been a year and six months since I've had my gastric sleep. I am feeling good, feeling great, looking good, feeling happy about my body. Um, let's just get into the first thing. So I'm down 96 pounds. Downtown, this left downtown. I'm down 96 pounds. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hyped about it. I'm down 96 pounds since my surgery in March 2022. And right now it's currently, what month are you in? August of 2023. So yeah, 96 pounds. Like, and anybody knows my story, you can go back in and look at my old videos. A girl lost 100 pounds before, 100 plus pounds before surgery and then double backed, gained all of it back. Didn't end up having a surgery and back down, back down. So down 96 pounds. Right now, I currently weigh 192 pounds and um, I fluctuate between like 190 and 205 pretty much on a normal basis. Like it just depends on that month. So that's usually what I fluctuate between like 190 and 205. My goal weight is 170. I don't really know what that's going to look like on me. I haven't been 170 since like the sixth grade, and that's just me being honest. Um, yeah, uh, one of the things that I complained about the most when I was first giving you guys updates on my journey was, ooh, excuse me, how rude. Um, 
Anyways, and don't pay attention to my nails. I just took off my press-ons. Don't come for me in the comments. People be mean in the comments. But anyways, um, was heartburn. Heartburn was one of my biggest complaints um, with the gastric sleeve. Um, yeah. So I found that my my heartburn is less when I eat certain foods. And that's just period. If you get heartburn and you don't have the surgery, certain foods give you heartburn, certain foods don't, right? I just never dealt with heartburn before the surgery. So for me, it was an adjustment. It actually keeps me on point because I'm like not the type of person to just run to the doctor when I when my body's going through stuff like that. Um, I don't want like prescribed medicine for it because people are like, oh, go to your doctor, see your doctor, get a prescribed medicine. No, I want to get down to the root cause of why I'm getting heartburn and I want to fix it. So it kind of keeps me on point. Like, obviously I'm human. I'm not on here trying to pretend like I do everything perfect. Somebody came for me in my last video like, I hate people like her. They go and spend all this money on surgeries and then they still mess up and eat bad. I'm not perfect. I'm not coming on here to pretend like I'm perfect. I'm a human, a human, okay? And that's just what it is. I'm not perfect. I don't have, I will eat a chicken wing, okay? I will eat a bag of a, a hot Cheetos if that's what I want. I hope this was connected that whole time. Why are you saying it's connected? My AirPods. Um, so certain things I still eat, but I just... One, I eat very small portions and I use it as a treat more so. So like, I'll just tell y'all my normal diet, like on a normal basis right now, what it looks like when I'm like on point is two shakes or smoothies. Cause sometimes I'm not feeling shakes and I want to do like fruit smoothies, green smoothies, um, two shakes or smoothies a day and one healthy meal. And I say healthy meal, like a colorful meal, like veggies and high protein. And then snacks, I just do fruits and veggies and high protein snacks, meaning like boiled eggs, raw nuts. <laughs> That's what she said. Raw nuts. Um, <laughs> help. Um, yeah, high protein snacks though. So boiled eggs is like my favorite though. So that's just that's just one of my favorite snacks. Um, as far as exercise is going, I have Definitely been up and down with my exercise routine because I, like I just stated earlier, I am a flight attendant. So like my schedule's been all over the place. Not only am I a flight attendant, outside of flight attendant on my off days, I'm a bartender. So I've just been all over the place. I don't have a regular nine to five schedule. That's not an excuse. Mm -mm. I'm not saying this to be an excuse because you make time for what you want to make time for. And I have been really reminding myself that. So why am I talking so much in my hands? I never do this. Who am I? Who are you? Um, so anyways, exercise. I have been finding fun ways to exercise. I, I find myself going to the gym and burning myself out. I still love the gym. Still love the gym. Still going to go to the gym. Never going to not go to the gym. But when I feel burned out on it, I find fun ways. So I bought me some rollerblades. I already have a, I bought a college stripper pole. I don't be stripping, I swear to God. I have a dance pole in my room that I used to utilize a lot more like some years ago. And I've been trying to get back on that because that's a really good exercise. I've been doing walking, you know, jogging here and there, fun activities with my children, swimming, walking on the beach. Walking in sand is an exercise. I live in Florida, I better utilize it. So yeah, that's basically like a short version rundown of my update for my gastric sleeve surgery. Um, do I regret it? No. Am I happy I got it? Yes. Did it change my life? Hell yeah. It changed my eating habits. It changed my relationship with food. And it's continuously changing it because still to this moment, a year and a half later, I still struggle with um, eating a lot of portion, a big portion of food, which I love that for me because a girl used to could eat. I used to could eat like I had, like I was too big men. Like I used to, I remember being on dates and good guys be like, like on that white chicks movie and she's like damn you sure could put it away oh why that truck behind me scared me <laughs> anyways yeah i used to eat and people used to call me out on it like dang you could eat girl yeah i know i used to be like whatever f i need to bleep out all these curse words i used to be like yeah forget you like i don't care yeah i could eat and i'm gonna eat so but that ultimately got me to over 300 pounds. And that's not what I was trying to do. That wasn't the goal. So this helped me control my eating. Um, no, it's not an easy way out. I still have to work hard. I could still overeat if I want. Trust me. 
I can. And with overeating, you gain weight. I can still not exercise. With not exercising, you gain weight. Why does it keep saying it's connected? Hold on, let me make sure y'all can hear me. Because these headphones is tripping. Um, I don't even remember where I left off. But yeah. Um, <sighs> what was it? What was I talking about? Oh, well, basically, the gastric sleep has changed my life. I would suggest it to anybody who struggles with eating, who has eating disorders. I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder. That is not a fun thing to have. I didn't always have it. I developed it through my weight loss journey, actually. And I'm just proud to be able to say that that is no longer a uh, forefront of my life. Do I have emotional eating moments still? Sure. Do I have them every day? No. No, I don't. All right. So, perfect. That's that. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments below. Or if you don't want to do that, you can meet me over on my Instagram or my TikTok at Peace with Nick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, moving on. My handy dandy notebook. <sighs> Dating. Oh, God. Um. So, yeah. I feel like this lighting is in and out. All right, so dating. As some of you guys know, and some of you guys don't know, I'm single. I'm single. Um, yeah, I'm single. We don't gotta talk about how long and all that. No, that's important. I'm just, I'm single, okay? I very much don't put my dating business out in the world, but um, here we go, I'm putting it out there. Uh, so uh, being single, I date. I'm a pretty beautiful woman, so people ask me out. People wanna take me out. Take me out. People want to take me outside and on dates and stuff. So I go. I go on dates. Um, my first thing with dating after having gastric sleeve is um, determining who am I comfortable to tell that I had this gastric sleeve. Not that it has to be the first thing when we're on the first date. Like, hi, my name's Dominique. My favorite color is yellow. Oh, and I had a gastric sleeve surgery. No, not like that. Meaning somebody, like, first date, first date. Regular first date stuff. But if I'm dating this person, I go on more than one date or whatnot, right? Uh, it might come up like just my weight loss journey is a big part of who I am. So like talking about certain things in our lives, that conversation may come up. And I just don't be knowing who I feel comfortable with telling that to. So when I first got the gastric sleeve surgery, uh, the first guy that I went, that I told that I had the gastric sleeve surgery, um, was a guy that I knew before I had it. A guy that I went on a date with before I had it. And a guy who also, I actually met this guy at the gym. So this was when I was on my initial weight loss journey, when I first, first, first got into this lifestyle. I met this guy at the gym years ago. And we ended up going on a date. And he, you know, I was a big girl even then. Even when he met me at the gym, I was like a pushing, I was like 250, you know, and then time went on and we stayed friends like through social media, but we just didn't continue dating. And then I got back extra fine. <laughs> I mean, I've always been fine, but like, you know, I got uh, got my body back in shape. And then here he comes wanting to go on another date. And so, um, and I, this was the beginning of my gastric sleep. So I was a little bit bigger than I am now. And he was like, uh, how did you lose the weight? You know, how'd you do it? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, you know, I haven't really seen my TikToks. Cause I post about my gastric sleeve on my TikToks. And he's like, oh, yeah, I thought I saw you put something about gastric sleeve surgery. I was so disappointed in you. I can't believe you took the easy route out. And I just, I just, I just wanted to, ooh, I just wanted to smack that bald-headed scallywhack in the back of his head. Like, you don't know my life. How are you going to be disappointed in something that don't affect you? Are your bills still getting paid, sir? Are you still waking up on the right side or the wrong side of the bed? Like, regardless if I got this surgery or not, like, why does this affect you? Like, I was just so irritated with that comment. Like, we literally, I would never, that was it. That was an ick for me. Like, you're weird for that. So, um, I kind of got a little PTSD from that because he was, like, the first guy I told. And then, um, so, I've been dating, and I don't tell many people that I have gastric sleeve surgery. Um, I feel like I have to be comfortable enough to have that conversation. And if I'm not comfortable enough, then I'm not going to force myself to tell you. Now, guys have questions because I go on dates and I eat baby-sized portions of food. And they think I'm just trying to be cute. 
but I like I can't eat it like you don't know that but yeah, I just ain't going to be able to do it. And they be looking at me like I'm wasting food and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, and I order small portions. I order just appetizer. And they're like, you can order more. Why you just order that? Because that's all I want. And they're like, oh, you don't got to try to be cute. No, this is all I want. This is all I want. You know, so that's kind of a weird part. Because it's like, if you they don't know, they don't understand. Another thing is, my stomach. After you have gastric sleep, your stomach breaks down food differently. Because you're, the entry to your new stomach is a lot smaller than it used to be. It's not as stretched out. <laughs> That's what he said. So um, the food, when it digests and the acid breaks it down, it makes noise. Like you can hear your food digesting. If you're sitting across the table from someone, you can hear it. It, it makes noise. It's like, it's like, <laughs> that's probably a bad imitation. But I'm just being honest. It Your stomach's gonna make noise. Um, let alone, don't let you be laid up with somebody and you just had a nice meal. That's it going to be like, they're going to be side-eyeing you like, damn, you good? Like, what's going on with her? Why her indigestion is indigesting? Like, yeah, it's it's a weird thing. So, like, so if a person doesn't know why that's going on, it's just like, all you can be like, it's like, you hear your little noises, it's like, blah, 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 blah. Like, <coughs> excuse me. And they're just looking at you like, did you just fart out your mouth? <laughs> That's what I feel like they be looking at me like, did you fart out your mouth? Like, and if I don't feel like explaining what the what the hell going on, I just don't, I don't explain. And so long story short, I just, I have to feel comfortable with sharing that information. And maybe I'll get to a point where I really don't care. I mean, like, I'm sharing it to the social media. I'm sharing it to my YouTube. If, if if they end up following me or finding me on any of these platforms, they're going to find out anyway. So it's not like it's a, a surprise secret. But sometimes I just don't want to hear what other people got to say. I just don't care about other people's opinion. So instead of me sharing what I am going through in my personal life, I just keep it to myself. And that's the part about being a Scorpio. People be like, they, people, Scorpios are sneaky. Scorpios be sneaky and they be lying. No, the thing is, we just leave out information. We don't sneak. We just don't give you all of it. Until you deserve it. Or until you earn it. Okay. So, I kind of went on a rant. So, yeah. I already touched bases with who to tell and who not to tell. Ordering lots of food. Um, the dumping, throwing up. So, if you ever had gastric surgery, if, if you relate or if you did any research, there's this thing called dumping, which is basically throwing up or sweating profusely and then throwing up. Like, if you do overeat your body basically is trying to process like what the hell did you just do and so you start sweating your heart rate starts going you start feeling nauseous and you might actually throw up and um it's unpleasant so i have been on dates where dates where i have ate a little bit more than my limit because i thought i can do that I, I forgot who i was and maybe even drunk a little bit over my limit and we're gonna get to drinking in a moment and uh had to excuse myself from the table like excuse me <laughs> went out to the bathroom and <laughs> run to the ladies room and i'm in there letting it off like <sighs> like exorcist like e exorcism in there like come out the bathroom my eyes is watering i look like drained from energy to the point where, like i come back to the table like you good i'm like yeah <laughs> fantastic like if they don't know they i don't mean to tell you yeah i just threw up in this bathroom i just i just had a whole exorcism projectile situation in there i'm not going to tell you that if i haven't told you about my my surgery so that's a that that's quite embarrassing you know that actually ends the date because i'm like oh, i'm gonna go home and go brush my teeth and i'm gonna go to bed because throwing up takes a lot of energy out of me i just it just drains me so that's that uh, drinking, same as food. You can't drink the way you used to. I've learned that the hard way. I, I kept thinking when I was 300 pounds, I could drink. A girl could throw them back, but I can't do that anymore. And I think there's moments where I forgot that and I would drink so much. Not only will I get sick, I will also be overly drunk. Like, now I gotta call Uber home from this date because I'm too drunk for you to drive me home and I don't trust you. Or I'm too drunk to drive myself home or whatever the case may be. Like, I've, I've been in that situation where I'm like, I have to Uber myself home because I'm too drunk. So, um, yeah. 
dating after having gastric is it's, it's interesting but it's doable it's doable and the thing is people are going to want to date you because your confidence levels up you're wearing new clothes you're feeling good you're looking good you're going to go on dates if you're single you know you may have a man and that's different hopefully he knows if you got a man i hope he knows but if you're single like i it's going to happen you're just going to have to either decide if you're going to tell people up front or you're going to just go through the motions and i'm learning as i go like now i just like i know my limits i'm just i'm getting better that's all i'm gonna say i'm not just explain myself i'm getting better i'm getting better at this whole dating after having this surgery um i'm starting to know my body a lot better in social situations and yeah that's all i got on that guys if you have more questions about that again comment below all right moving on last thing last all right i'm trying to determine how i should do this because i'm like a box of chocolates as you can see i'm like a box of chocolates i don't share everything like i said but today i'm going to share some news that i haven't shared with anyone and youtube's getting it first youtube might be the only one that's getting it i don't know maybe tiktok too but plastic surgery i had it yeah i had it actually a week of my after my year anniversary of my gastric sleeve so i had it in march of 2023 and it is august of 2023 and i had my gastric march of 2022 so literally a year later i had surgery what surgery you ask what surgery did i have i had fat transfer to my buttocks and hips fat transfer to my booty and hips yes and I'm so, let me tell you about my process, okay? So, let's just get to it. I'm not going to keep going around it. Uh, first of all, let me insert a picture here of my before and my after. Before and after. And then I'll give you guys a live photo, a uh, live video of what I look like right now, today, if you just stay to the end of the video. But here's my picture. Nice, nice. I'll give y'all a, a little slideshow at the end of the video too, like, cause I got plenty of pictures that I just want to share. <laughs> cause I'm just loving my body, and that's the first time ever. I mean, I used to be like eight years old and hated my body. So for me to love my body, I don't care what anybody has to say. That's all I can say. Um, it took me so long to share this because the people are just critical, and I just don't be caring what people got to say. But now I really just I want to be transparent about my journey. I don't want people to think that um ch cheating the system or lying about certain things i want people to know the real i just want to be authentically myself and tell my story Authent authentically authentically i want to tell my story authentically and um this no a girl still is working out a girl still eating healthy these things don't stop like because you can spend money on anything and still lose it so let me just put that disclaimer out there okay all right cool so fat transfer transfer to the butt I had my surgery here in Tampa. Uh, me, I'm in Vegas right now. But I had my surgery at home in Tampa with a doctor named Dr. Fig. I think his real name is Dr. Figaroni. <laughs> I might be saying that wrong. But uh, he works at Smart Body Shape. I'll just tag all that at the bottom. Okay? Yeah. So, um, Dr. Fig, Tampa. And it was a great price. I'm not going to tell my price because his price has changed. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I did it for me because I wanted to. I told myself if I reach two, 200 pounds by a year anniversary, then I'm going to go get my fat transfer, which is this part one of my process of what I call my mommy makeover. Because it is a mommy makeover because, yeah, I deserve my body back. I had my kids when I was 18 and 20. And I just don't feel like I ever got to enjoy my adult body. Like, I was still developing and I was pregnant. And whose fault is that? Nobody's. Mine. I got pregnant. Nobody put a gun to my head. But I'm telling you, I never got to see my body in its adult stage before a baby. So I feel like I deserve to do what I want to do with my body. Okay, enough explaining. So I got fat transfer to the butt. So basically, they did lipo. Uh, the top part of my abdomen. Abdomen. <laughs> top part of my abdomen and the lower part of my abdomen and the lower part of my back. I didn't get my top, my, my bra line done. Um, so just those three areas. Oh, in my sides, my sides. I got some in my sides. 
And then they took that fat and they transferred it to my hips and my butt. They call it a BBL. I don't call it a BBL because it has such a negative uh, word, like it has such a negative tone around that word. So I call it, it's medical term, a fat transfer. That's what it is. Um, after surgery, I still weighed the same. I actually weighed more because I was swollen. But after the swelling went down, I still weighed 200. Didn't change. I didn't, I didn't lose weight and they took the weight off of me and I just got skinny or something. No, it just it got reproportioned somewhere else. Um, I have a blog that I'm going to upload. I did record my process. I just haven't uploaded it. I will be uploading it. I don't know if I'm going to upload it before this video or after, but I'm going to upload it. Um, recovery was simultaneously pretty cool. Like, it wasn't that bad. I only had a few little small holes, incisions on my stomach. Uh, there's one, but I'm not going to stand up right now because I just want to finish talking. But I had little tiny, tiny holes, like smaller than a dime. Um, that's where the fat came out. And then I had little tiny, tiny holes on my hips and right in my booty crack. That's where I put the fat inside. I asked for a very natural butt. I didn't want it to look, that's why some people don't even know I had it. It just looks like I've been doing my squats. Like, I'm telling you, people don't even know I had it. Nobody's like, damn, did you get a BBL? Nobody said that to me. Nobody's questioned that because it's very natural. And I told him, I want natural. If I come out here looking like who did it and why, I'm going to sue you. And he laughed, but I was serious. And I think he took me serious because my butt looks very natural. I mean, it is natural. It is my own ass. But he didn't overdo it, basically. Um, so I'll show y'all pictures. Well, y'all seen some pictures. I'll show y'all in real time. Uh, recovery took about six weeks. I would say the worst part of my recovery, of course, it was pain. Pain was felt in the first few days. But pain resided probably after, like, day three. And... Uh, the worst part for me was the itching, the itching and the draining. So I went and got, um, what is it? Lymphatic drainage massages for like 10, 10, 10 sessions after my surgery. That was painful when they used to push all the, the, the fluid out of me at the massage appointments. That was painful. Uh, outside of that, it was itching. Like, I guess your fat trying to mend back to your tissues. It's itchy. So I was always just itchy. Like, and then I had to wear that faha. And I couldn't really itch the itch. You ain't supposed to really itch the itch. So it was that part was the worst. That's to me was the worst for me. Um, I will go in more detail in my vlog that I recorded and that I will be uploading. Uh, do, do I feel like having the fat transfer? Oh my god, uh, just gotta get it together. Having the fat transfer, I ate a salad and it's just like. Having the fat transfer after the surgery a year later, did I feel like that was enough time? I do. I do. Only because um, I had lost such a, a substantial amount of weight. I was already down like 80-something pounds. And the skin, I still have loose skin because I just got fat transfer. I didn't get a tummy tuck. I didn't get none of that. I have actually more loose skin now than I did before the before I had the surgery. Uh, before I had the fat transfer surgery. So... I'll get to, you know, what I'm going to do about that soon. But um, I feel like a year is enough time. I don't feel like a doctor would even approve me if it wasn't enough time. So I, I was fine. It was fine. A year, I feel like it's more than enough time to have your surgery. But everybody's body's different. You have to listen to your body. You got to do what you want to do for yourself. Um, let's see. Other surgeries that I plan to get. Tummy tuck. Mm -hmm. I want to get the lipo in my out of my top area here um it's not really bad actually like it's really not bad but i just want that seamless look so i want like below my bra area i want a tummy tuck let me let me say it in the manifesting way i'm getting a lipo in my bra area i'm getting a tummy tuck and i'm getting my boobs lifts lifts i'm getting my boob augmentation i want them to be lifted I don't really want, I don't want implants. I'm okay with being a B cup. Because these things been big since I was like, since seventh grade, I've been wearing a C cup. I went from training bra to C. And that, and, and, and when I was a bigger girl, I was wearing double D, triple D, outside of letters like E, F, and G. Like I was, yeah, they got big, but I lost weight. And so now I'm in a double D, like a low double D, or I could wear a D, just depends on the type of bra. Um, so yeah, I want these girls gone. I want them small. 
I'll take a B cup. Like, I have a lot of loose skin on them because of the weight loss. So, you lift them up, put the nipples somewhere else, and they're going to look smaller. So, um, yeah, those are going to be the other ones I'm going to get. I will document those journeys as well. Um, on top of all of this, I will be documenting a lot of my fitness journey, you know, what I eat, my workouts, workout plans, all these good things that's keeping the body that not only did I invest in, but the body that I live in and the body that I have worked very hard to maintain and continuing to maintain. And all of this, this, all this does for me is just makes me more happy with myself that I'm doing what I want to do for me. I'm not worried about what anybody else got to say. I'm not worried about um, anybody else's opinion. I just do what I want to do for me. And at the end of the day, guess who's happy? Me. <laughs> I'm the one who's happy in the end of the day. So yeah, I really hope this video was informative. And I hope, <coughs> oh my, I hope that um, this update was what y'all needed. And yeah, let me give y'all my 360 of my 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 updated body, my updated body. And yeah, um, don't forget to like and subscribe though. Don't forget to do that and push that bell. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Peace with me. Cool, thanks. Peace. <laughs>